We are in the cockpit, just prior to going outside for the exterior inspection. First of all, the pilot non-flying checks that the landing gear lever is in the down position. And that the parking brakes handle is in the on position. On the engine warning display memo section, parking brake in green indicates that the parking brake handle is in the on position. Notice that the pressure to the main brakes is indicated for each main landing gear. The yellow hydraulic system or accumulators supply the alternate and parking brake pressure. The pressure indication should be in the green area. This indicates that the accumulator can hold the parking brake pressure for at least 12 hours. If the pressure indication is not in the green arc, use the yellow hydraulic electrical pump to recharge the brake accumulator. Warning. Get ground crew clearance before using the electric pump. As we will be checking the brake wear indicators during the walk around, the parking brake must be set to on. During exterior inspection, on the nose landing gear, we check the gear structure and download springs, the hydraulic lines, the electrical wires, taxi takeoff turn off lights, the chocks, wheels, and tires. On the main landing gear, we check the gear structure and download springs, the wheel well for general condition, wheels and tires, the hydraulic lines, the electrical wires, chocks and safety pin removed, brake wear indicator. Brake wear indicators indicate the state of the carbon discs. Note, as previously mentioned, the parking brake must be on for an accurate brake wear check. We are back in the cockpit for the cockpit preparation. The pilot flying verifies that the three gear pins and covers are on board and stowed. We also check that the gravity gear extension lever is stowed. It's now time to push back. We have to release the parking brake. Set the parking brake to off. The parking brake is off. The brake's pressure is back to zero. During pushback, the nose wheel steering selector, located on the nose wheel, is in the towing position. Nose wheel steering disconnected memo is displayed in green on the engine warning display. With this indication, nose wheel steering is not possible from the cockpit. It becomes amber if one engine is running. During taxi, the ECAM wheel page is automatically displayed. Notice the two green triangles for each gear. They indicate that the gear is down and locked. Each triangle is controlled by one LGCIU. The green horizontal lines indicate that the doors are locked up in the normal position.
Let's have a look at the information displayed below. Brake temperature and tire pressure are displayed in green to indicate that they are normal. During taxi, the auto brake is armed at max for takeoff. Set the auto brake to maximum. The following indications show that the auto brake is armed. On in the selected push button switch. A message in green on the ECAM wheel page. And auto brake max changes from blue to green on the takeoff configuration message. During taxi, either steering handwheel can be used to control the direction of the aircraft. The steering handwheel provides 75 degrees of nose wheel deflection, left or right. Signals from each handwheel are summed up. If two handwheels are moved in the same direction, the nose wheel deflection will be equivalent to the sum of the handwheel commands. While you are taxiing the aircraft for takeoff, you will check the flight controls. To check the rudder, you must press the rudder pedal disconnect switch. This button disconnects the nose wheel steering from the rudder, so that you can check full deflection of the rudder pedals versus the indications on the ECAM. You will see and do this in the normal operation module of the flight controls. During takeoff, the aircraft direction is controlled exclusively using the rudder pedals. The rudder pedals provide up to 6 degrees of right and left deflection at low speed. As the speed increases, this deflection angle decreases progressively to 0 at 130 knots when directional control is 0% nose wheel and 100% rudder. We have just completed the takeoff. We are airborne and it's now time to raise the landing gear. Normally, at this phase of the flight, the ECAM engine page is displayed, but so that you can see and learn the landing gear system indications, we have displayed the ECAM wheel page. Retract the landing gear. The landing gear doors deflect downward and change to amber to indicate that they are in transit, then fully open. At the same time on the main gear, the braking system automatically brakes the wheels. As the doors close, you will hear in the cockpit the sound of the brake band braking the nose wheels. As soon as the landing gear lever is moved to the up position, the message landing gear control appears. This indicates that there is a discrepancy between the landing gear and lever position. Watch the ECAM and the landing gear lights. We will point out the changes as they occur. Then the landing gear retracts. There are two sets of indications which inform the pilot that the landing gear is no longer locked. Red unlock is illuminated in the position indicator lights. And the landing gear indicators become red on the ECAM wheel page. On the ECAM wheel page, the gear is retracted and the doors close. On the landing panel, the unlocked indications extinguish. Once the landing gear lever is in the up position, 
the auto brake is automatically disengaged. On disappears on the Max push button and Auto Brake Max disappears on the Ecamm wheel page. We will now see the indications that appear on approach when the landing gear is extended down. It is now time to extend the landing gear. Watch the indications. Extend the landing gear. As soon as the lever is down, the ECAM wheel page is automatically displayed. On the ECAM wheel page, the landing gear door indications change from green to amber to indicate that the doors are opening, doors in transit. On the landing gear panel, the unlocked indications turn red to indicate that the gear is unlocked. The landing gear unlocks and descends. On the ECAM wheel page, the landing gear indications are displayed in red. The landing gear extends. On the ECAM wheel page, the landing gear indications change from red to green, and the door indications change from amber to green as the doors are locked up. On the landing gear panel, the unlocked indications extinguish and the landing gear indications become green to indicate that the gear is down and locked. These green dashes appear in flight when the landing gear is extended. They remain displayed until touchdown. They will come on and off during braking according to the anti-skid release orders. They indicate that the anti-skid is normal and available. Note the blue release indication means released and is a label only. Airbus recommends the use of the auto brake on contaminated runways or when operating in low visibility. For landing today, we will use the auto brake. Set the auto brake to low. The following indications indicate that the auto brake is armed. On in the selected push button. Auto brake low in green on the engine warning display and auto brake low in green on the ECAM wheel page. Note on the engine warning display the memo auto brake low only appears below 800 feet above ground level. We have just touched down. During landing rollout, extension of the ground spoilers triggers the auto brake. The deceleration light illuminates green when the aircraft deceleration is at least 80% of the selected rate. Auto brake action depends on the rate selected. Low Braking 4 seconds approximately after the ground spoilers deploy. Med. Braking 2 seconds approximately after the ground spoilers deploy and higher deceleration than in low. Max. Immediate braking with max deceleration rate as soon as the system generates the ground spoiler order. This mode is only used for takeoff. On the ECAM wheel page, watch the green dashes. They appear during braking, indicating that the anti-skid is active.
The auto brake can be deselected either using the corresponding push button on the auto brake panel or by applying sufficient force to at least one brake pedal when auto brake is operating in max, med or low mode. On the ECAM wheel page, check the brake temperature for significant differences and high temperatures. A maintenance action is required when the difference between two brakes of the same gear is greater than 150 degrees or when the mean temperature of one gear differs by more than 200 degrees with another gear. Above 100 degrees Celsius, a green arc is displayed over the hottest brake temperature. In this case, the brake fans must be selected on. Switch the brake fan on. The on light illuminates white, indicating that the brake fan is running. Stopping at the gate, the first action is to set the parking brake on. We have set the parking brake for you. Before releasing the pedals, check the brake pressure indications. Note, as soon as the parking brake is on, braking using the pedal is on. The other braking modes and anti-skid system are deactivated.